So Breaking Bad had its fair share of excellent villains, from Crazy 8 in Season 1 to Todd and the white supremacist in Season 5. However, no characters proved as engaging and frankly villainous as Gustavo Fring and Heisenberg. Strangely enough, Gus and Heisenberg were both mild-mannered and initially seemed harmless, but when probed, could unleash an inner evil. The use of the word perfect when describing a villain seems rather ironic, and yet here it seems fitting. Critically, Breaking Bad provides the characters to make this sort of analysis possible, and so after finishing Season 5 only days ago, the main thing that seemed to stick in my mind was how well-crafted the villains were. After watching a character for several hours, one can become sympathetic with them, or alternatively you may find them annoying, or in certain cases disturbing. With Heisenberg and Gustavo Fring, we are torn in opposite directions. Their mild manner and easily formed smiles draw sympathy, while their relentless greed and hunger for power draws negative emotions. Most TV shows and movies paint the villain as the embodiment of pure evil. In some cases this can be effective in crafting an engaging and interesting villain, if it is done right. Right. Generally though, the antagonist is disappointingly two-dimensional, and their demise or other such fate does not trigger any emotion whatsoever. An example of a movie with a two-dimensional villain is Terminator Dark Fate. As well as being a terrible homage to the original movies, Terminator Dark Fate also had the curse of predictability. From the beginning, the villain's actions and the outcome at the end of the movie were crystal clear, so much so that the entirety of the movie felt dull and lifeless. The antagonist acts as the catalyst for the plot, and just like in chemistry, without a good catalyst, things happen slowly. That's probably why Breaking Bad is so consistently action-packed. The first step to creating the perfect villain involves their motive. Generally, the motive of a villain seems rather unimportant and is usually based off selfish desires, but not Breaking Bad. Both Heisenberg and Gustavo Fring set out with the honourable intention to provide for others, but as the show progresses, the idea of providing becomes less and less selfless, as it becomes clear that both men are only interested in providing themselves with self-worth. This idea of providing is purposely placed within a narrative of Breaking Bad, and I believe this to be for two reasons. Firstly, it humanises the villain, a step that is crucial but often forgotten. The humanisation of the villain is important, as it makes the villain seem much more interesting and relatable, which allows for greater immersion in the plot. And secondly, it's a notion the target audience can understand, the target audience of course being mostly adults. Most adults understand the stress of having to provide, whether it's for their family or even just them themselves. Heisenberg and Gus don't have a fantastical idea to destroy half the universe or something absurd like that. Their ideology and motivation is grounded and realistic, which makes the plot believable and thus more immersive. The second thing to note is how callous Gus and Heisenberg are. As each character develops, it is clear our first impressions were misguided, as both characters kill mercilessly to keep themselves afloat. The key thing here is that each death feels significant and powerful, as we genuinely have some sort of attachment to the character. Due to the fact that most of the people in Breaking Bad who are murdered have some sort of backstory, each death feels more real, as if actual people are killed, which makes our villains seem even more murderous. Breaking Bad takes time to introduce the victim and give him or her a backstory. For example, in Season 5 when Andrew was shot by Todd, her death was a genuine shock, as there was plenty of screen time dedicated to painting Andrea as a genuine person, so when Todd shot her, the event felt real. Also, the shots of our protagonist Jesse literally screaming is distressing and sets the tone for the entire scene. It felt as if Todd had genuinely just killed a real single mother, which is of course a harrowing notion. A Breaking Bad does this numerous times throughout its five seasons, for example with Hank. And now, while Walt didn't kill Hank himself, his involvement in the manufacturing and distribution of meth and his affiliation with the band of white supremacists was inevitably Hank's downfall. Now this was probably the most powerful and truly shocking death of the entire show, as we had spent so much time with Hank throughout the five seasons that losing him felt genuinely sad. It's the way that Vince Gilligan develops these characters that makes each murder or death feel significant and genuine, which obviously makes Walton Gus out as genuine genocidal villains. On the topic of death, which provides the general structure for the show, I want to talk about the detail that goes into each death and how that contributes to the overall legitimacy of our villains. 
Throughout the seasons, there are numerous murderous schemes concocted by our villains. From Walt taking down Tuco with the ricin, to Gus wiping out Don Eladio and his men. Each scheme is carefully planned and thought out. In addition to this, each murder plot as well as the actual execution seems arduous, as if the execution of each victim is genuinely difficult to carry out, which of course in real life it would be. The simple notion of just shooting someone dead and leaving them in the street is one rarely ever considered in Breaking Bad. The only really reckless murder that takes place in the show is when Rolt runs over and shoots the two low level drug dealers that were going to kill Jesse. And as we know, this sloppy murder was not inconsequential, and landing Walt and Jesse in particularly hot water with Gus. It's in this chain of events that Gus's true colours shine through, as he slits Victor's throat, a character which played a relatively silent but key role nonetheless up until this point. This is also the point in which Gus is planning to kill Walt and his family. My point is that the struggle and anguish each murder seems to cause is realistic and sensical, which legitimises the villains. They seem real. They don't seem like artificial fabrications, which makes them even more harrowing. There is generally an unwritten rule among criminals, and that is that children are off limits. However, multiple times in Breaking Bad, a child's life is put at risk in the interest of our antagonist. This is first seen when Gus Fring has Andrea's kid brother killed by the two drug dealers. At least that's the impression we are given. This theme continues when Gus friends to kill Walt's family, including his 16 year old son and his baby. In season 4, Walter also poisons Brock, with the intention to turn Jesse against Gus, a move that allows him to gain control of Jesse and enlist his help in the plot to kill Gus. And in season 5, Drew Sharp is shot in cold blood by Todd, who shows no remorse after the killing. The point is that our two Two main antagonists are both willing to harm children, which is generally perceived as an off-limits measure and one rarely taken in mainstream entertainment due to the sensitivity of the issue. The presence of these sort of actions in Breaking Bad is disturbing and generates a certain kind of emotion the death of an adult just can't generate. The fact that both Walt and Gus do this is truly shocking due to the fact that Walt has two children and Gus claims to have children. This truly highlights how their villainy is built on relentless self-interest and how they have no boundaries, not even those too severe for most criminals to cross. Another thing I want to look at is the downfall of each villain. In both TV and film, quite often the downfall or death of a villain is underwhelming or anticlimactic. This makes the plot suffer as generally a large portion of a villain-centric movie is focused on the antagonist. So when a villain's death is simplistic and mundane, it sort of undermines the entire narrative up until that point and can leave a general sense of disappointment in the audience. This can to some extent ruin an entire series or at least degrade it to some degree. And there are plenty of examples of this, but I'm glad to see with Breaking Bad there is no such disappointment. In Breaking Bad, both Gus's and Walt's deaths feel satisfactory, and I know that kind of sounds creepy, but you know what I mean. Both Gus's and Walt's deaths are introduced as ideas very early on, with the pink bear with Harvard's face torn off introduced quite a few episodes before Gus is eventually killed, obviously foreshadowing the moment when Gus would have his face torn off by the explosion created by Walt. The idea of Walt dying is introduced very early on, within the first episode in fact, when Walter is diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. The idea of Walt losing his life becomes one that we are comfortable with, and the numerous close calls with death Walt experiences reinforces this fact. Not only are the deaths not sudden, but they are also not simple. Both Walt's and Gus's deaths are arduous and seemingly impossible to bring about. The amount of time and effort Walt puts into killing Gus is notable, and he tries multiple methods of execution before finally being able to kill Gus in Face Off, an episode cruelly named due to Gus's fate at the end of the episode. Walt's road to death is also an incredibly difficult journey, with the likes of Crazy 8, Tuco, Gus, Jesse, and we can't forget lung cancer, all trying to kill Walt at one point or another. Walt's impressive scrapes with the Grim Reaper make Walt's actual death even more powerful, a death powered by Walt's own self-destructive behaviour. Of course, the cancer relapse would have likely caused Walter to lose his life, but the actual cause of death was a bullet wound he ironically inflicted upon himself when he unleashed the modified M60 machine gun he had stashed in the back of his car. This death represents how the greed and self-interest Walt had been absorbed by eventually led to his downfall. Walt was a true mastermind, a man who was seemingly invincible, and had managed to crush every single thing in his way, including his family. But his one true enemy was the most powerful of all, himself. 
My point is that each of our villains are smart, and rightly so, killing them is hard, a notion that makes sense given their power and influence in the criminal underworld. Vince Gilligan acknowledges this fact, and makes sure their deaths are managed respective to this. So in summary, our antagonists are sweet but vicious, mild-mannered but harsh, perceivably harmless but ruthlessly violent, and it's this combination of both a mild manner as well as the unwavering desire to be a monster that makes Gus Fring and Heisenberg such effective and frankly terrifying villains. So there you have it, that is how you create the perfect villain. So if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and subscribe with post notifications turned on so you never miss an upload. And leave a comment down below which is your favourite villain in Breaking Bad, Gus or Heisenberg. So my name is basically Trending and I'll see you guys next time. It's so cold outside, I'm alone.